course, go back to my uh, favourite part of the day, and we're talking about some random miscellaneous subjects that have um, great interest to the Islamic mm -hmm. community, but not really much uh, discussed. Um, I'm of course joined by Sayyid Mahsan Shah today. Assalamu alaikum Sayyid. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. How are you doing today? I'm very well. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing well. Doing Lovely well. morning. Nice to see Same you smiling on this great morning. Great London. Brilliant. Good, Mashallah. good. That's what we need, your enthusiasm. Yeah. And Thank uh, you. Had a lovely weekend. Good. Good, good alhamdulillah. Good. Um, it's always good to have you, Sayyid. So we're going to give you a, a subject. We were just Please. thinking about, you know, we, we previously mornings have spoken about different types of meat and, you know, halal and haram. Mm. Um, and one of the things actually, you know, you hear in some... Um, you know, sort of documentaries is um, how so, sort of like the forbidden meat gets, you know, included into sort of halal meat. Mm. So I remember there's been doner kebabs and they've actually found pork in them and mm, things indeed. like that. So um, really we're going to discuss forbidden sort of like those kind of meats that we're not supposed to be eating um, and, and then obviously what we're supposed to do with precaution wise and things like that. So um, in terms of forbidden meat, yeah. I don't know, Ali, if you know any that we're not supposed to eat, but... Well, um, I'm assuming, like, for, I know, for example, maybe the, um, the what's it, the, the thing that, that holds the, the feces and stuff. The bowel. Is it the bowel? The bowel, yeah. yeah. Is that probably one of the maybe Indeed. eyes? I really <laughs> hope that's not allowed. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. I don't know, because uh, you never yeah. know. In this, in this society, anything is, is, is more or less eaten, yeah. make, made to look like a delicacy. Indeed. Um, True. But, uh, but yeah, please tell us. Mm. Tell us about some of the food. Yeah. Um, so yeah, what I wanted to do was actually focus on uh, parts of the animal which you're not supposed to, we're not supposed to, not allowed to eat. Obviously, we, we understand you're not allowed to eat pork, you're not allowed to mm. eat you know, dog, cat. Mm. Um, you know, certain Maharaj won't allow you to eat squid and octopus and, and so forth. Mm. But when we have, you know, a, a carcass, maybe, you know, you uh, sacrifice an animal yourself, there are certain parts of that animal you are not allowed to eat. Now, I've got a list here. According to Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi, Hafadullah, if you go to his Rasala Amaliya, page 575, he'll give you a whole list here. Really? Um, so, yeah, I'll just read them out to you. The first of all is, is this is quite, um, you know, common sense really is dung. Um, blood. Mm. Blood will. I'm, I'm going to make a note on blood because that's a very important issue that I want to speak indeed, to you about. Indeed, yeah. if you eat steaks, then <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's steak eater. Blood, know, blood is, yeah. is yeah. Blood, uh, the male and female genitals, uh, placenta, um, the glands. The placenta. Yeah, which is that's interesting. Exactly. Yes. Human indeed. placenta is actually okay to eat. Indeed. It's indeed. actually nutritional. Yes, yes. Benefits to it as indeed. well. Indeed, we will okay. discuss that. Inshallah. Um, glands, uh, testicles, the pituitary gland, which is in the brain. Uh, we have the spinal cord, um, mm -hmm. the two wide yellow nerves which are on both sides of the spinal cord from the neck all the way down to the tail, wow. the spleen, the gallbladder, the urinary bladder, the pupil of the eye. Mm. So the eye itself entirely, but the pupil of the eye and the material between the hooves. Oh, okay. These are all forbidden to eat. Your questions, please. Okay, so <laughs> obviously we have a lot of processed meat here in, in, in the UK. Indeed. Um, and God knows what's put in there. You've seen videos on yeah. YouTube of a whole host of different things, beaks to, to, to feet, to hooves, to whatever, just being churned and, and processed into, into one thing, which is quite tasty, uh, I, I won't, I'll be honest. Um, but again, people are always careful of what's actually been put inside yeah. that. Um, that's probably one of the reasons I mentioned in previous episodes why I got gout um, yeah. is mm. because of that processed meat and it's, it's essentially the stuff inside it. Um, what if, of course you don't know, but how would you be able to find out if other, these certain parts of the body um, were put into this machine, churned to make processed meat? How would you know? Wasn't there that story is that there was a, a news um, outbreak a few years ago about horse meat being sold? Yes. As I don't know which meat it was being replaced, like sausage but, or something. Yeah, it was something in the burgers or something, wow. and then big, um, you know, scandal about you know it's not the meat that you think you're eating. Um, so you know, it's going on with things like that. How do you know, and what do you do? So first of all, um, come from an Islamic perspective, I'm giving you the list of these meat, these parts of the animal you're not allowed to eat. Mm. Um, if for uh, some circumstance that they actually get involved into halal meat. For example, processed meat, um, things like doner kebabs, uh, quarter pounder burgers you get from your chicken yeah. shop, even with chicken, the steak burgers and stuff, this mm. is processed. Um, it does really you know, worry mm. people that what 
part of the animal are they using mm. to actually make this product? Furthermore, how much of this product is an animal? It's not even 100% yeah. all the animal. Let's say you wow. took all the trimmings and whatever and you made You're something right. out of it. Mm. It's not even that. They put like, I think yep. it's mRNA or something. They, they, they put these other uh, substances in it mm. to, to, to give it volume. Yeah. You know? And Colour. It, Colour, exactly. And it has really, yeah. really bad effects on your health. Because wow. if you see the ingredients, and I don't know, Ali, if you ever read the, the processed meat, when you see the ingredients of particular meats, even when you go on I'm totally fast... totally oblivious to all of this, by the way. Yeah. All I do is open the package and eat. I really yeah. should. And, and, and but really you'd be surprised when you look at the percentage of meat mm. contained. Wow. You think, well, what's the rest then? If it's 60% chicken, <laughs> yeah. what's 40% or what's 20%? Exactly. So I guess that's giving you the quality of that meat product then, isn't it? Indeed. So the higher it is to 100, yes. the more pure it will be. Um, so how, how does it work? They skin the meat. Yep. Take the feathers off. Yes. What about the bones? Well, if you if you've got meat with bones on it, obviously that's where they are. But boneless meat, yeah, they'll take the bones off. Maybe they might do something with the bone, especially the cartilage. There's yeah. cart they, they, they they take bits of the cartilage. They'll take other bits well, of I the thought, organs. I would have because I've seen videos. It's, it's quite alarming when mm. they put like chicks, feathers, beaks, skin, not oh. skin, whatever, literally into the grinder, mm. and then. At the end of it comes this this mush of just oh meat God. and mixed with feathers and stuff. So how does that? You know, even exactly. saying that, it's like when even when you go to the butcher and you see them, if they're trimming your meat and they're trimming the fat of it off from it, I mean, fat is obviously not healthy for you. But they're they're separating a pile, and yeah. I think is that the doner kebab pile you're making? Because wow. what is it? Where is it going? It's not going to be coming exactly. to you. Exactly. It's going it's, somewhere. It's very very important. Two things. Number one, it's very, very important to understand what you are eating and what you're actually mm. getting. Secondly, whether this is halal or haram. Because if they're putting in from the list I gave you, the spleen, the gallbladder, mm. the pituitary will the ingredients, gland, but Will the packaging tell you this? It should do. By law, you are supposed to know exactly what is in your product. So the ingredients, mm. obviously, they, they will do their best to give you what is in this product. Mm. Yeah, but if they, but if they put it under a banner of chicken yeah. and it's a chicken bladder chicken they're placenta not gonna, they're yeah. not going to mention exactly but you have every right to inquire mm. so we should you know uh, really? write to the company and say look you're saying chicken can you please give me a list of what parts of the chicken you are using if not we can always go to the health food health authorities and say could you please investigate i just want to know what i'm eating so it's going to have a list because technically something that is halal has become haram because it's got but you'd think if it's a as a, it's a halal product now, the list you've given is from, you know, a Marjal. What about the other schools of thoughts or the other Marjals? Are they, is this a consensual list yeah. across Islamic, you know, fiqh? Or is I, this I believe it is. I mean, unfortunately, not all the Rasal Amaliyas in English mm. will be as detailed as say Sadi. Um, but yes, you, uh, you know, majority of the Maraja ha have the same fatawa that you are not allowed to consume these parts mm. of the animal. So, so if you had an Ahl Sunnah, Abattoir, yeah, and they, they what, what, what's their rule? I mean, we don't know what their rulings are. Mm. Most of them, I presume, are the ones that are running mm -hmm. the. Um, I believe they have a different ruling. They, so they, they may be allowed parts. certain, certain from that parts. list. Certain parts will be acceptable for them to eat. I've been to a Pakistani butcher shop. I'm sure you have, and there's always that thing that we see that when you know our mom gives us a nudge and says, "You're not touching that, and mm. you're not eating mm. that," and mm. that you know, other Muslims do eat this mm. part of the animal. Um, so, mm. you know, we do need to be very, very careful of what we are consuming. The main thing is to identify what you are eating and what is in your product, you know, because ignorance is a bliss. And yes, if yeah. you do not know, then there is no haram on, on you know, mm. recorded on your account. However, that doesn't mean that, you know, you're, you should be eating it because mm. we discussed beforehand, it does have an effect on who you are and your yes. soul. Yeah. And you so know, what if, technically what if, you are eating haram. Yeah, what yeah. If, yeah, exactly. What if you do find out that actually one of these ingredients or body parts is part of the ingredients? Yeah. And then, well, number one, you have the obligation to stop eating from that, that yeah. specific product manufacturer. Yes. And then do you have an obligation to tell people? Yes, you do. Right, of course. that's an interesting question. Of course, you, you must. You have an obligation to inform everyone. I think the best thing to do is actually inform the authorities, the, the authorities mm -hmm. or the actual company and say, look, this is in your product, you need to advertise it more. Or if you have a halal sticker, could you please, you know, do something in regards to that halal certification? Mm. Because according to, you know, my rulings, it's not halal oh. and you're false advertising technically. Oh. It actually, that goes on to the next question that I have that, you know, gelatine is a big issue in our oh, community. Wow. And, and 
I get really irate when you hear these, see these, you know, messages going around, do not eat X, Y product is not allowed to be eaten now by Muslims because it may contain gelatin. Is that something that we're supposed to do? I, I was told that, you know, if you find information for yourself, keep it to yourself, but what, what's the ruling? What, what is a in terms of In terms of gelatin, um, this caused a lot of debate. Yeah. It sparked a big debate within our community. Mm. Uh, what is gelatin? Mm. What's the source of gelatin? Uh, may it be consumed or may it not? We have products that have gelatin in it and they've got a big green V to say it's suitable for vegetarians. Gelatin is, is an ingredient which originally it com comes from bone marrow um, and it's used in it. We get in a lot of jelly uh, and, 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 and those sort of products. Um, those sweets, the jelly sweets yeah, that we get, yeah. very famous in, in our community. Um, you know, they, they can contain this ingredient. Uh, some of it comes from animals which have not been slaughtered in a halal way. For example, like a cow or a lamb. Mm. Some of it comes from a pig, from pork. They'll take it out of the pig bones. Some of it, there is a, uh, some of it comes from a plant. So they can use it from a plant. Sometimes they take a bit of everything and mix it all together. Mm. Our maraja, majority of them have said that if it is halal, uh, from a halal animal, like a cow or a lamb or, or such, it's fine to consume. It's okay. There's no problem. If there is, um, sorry, if it comes from an animal which is not halal, so beef, cow, or even you know pork, which is known as najis al ain, yeah. it's never tahir, it's never halal, and, and very very yeah. exclusive circumstances. Um, if there is istihal, which is a change in its formation, composition, of in its composition mm. of, of its chemicals, um, then yes. It, it can be consumed. If it hasn't, then it is still haram. Mm. The question is, how do we indicate and identify a change in the composition? So if I was to extract gelatin from pork mm. at, uh, initially, mm. and then it goes through its process, and then the product I have at the end, if I can somehow um, you know, look and see if there's a difference within the structure that is the product I have at the end is this the original product from the beginning or is it something totally different yeah. to give an example to the viewers what istihal is if you have uh, a, a dead cat so let's say yeah. now that, that's a dead animal it's najis yeah. if you burn it it becomes ash is that ash najis? no it's not yeah. because it was a cat it's now ash mm. the ash is tahir this is what we call it as istihal it's from one thing uh, change, changing into another thing uh, through through a, a process. A process is the process significant as well. Indeed, the process is. So does it have to be heat or? No, no. It doesn't matter which process it is. Okay. But it has to be a process. Mm. For example, to uh, change its chemical composition. Indeed. Like I'm talking about the nitty gritty compounds. Yes. In the mm. I mean, normally it's it's used with heat because that's what it requires to break the of bonds. Yeah. Um, a, a classic example is wine. Mm. Uh, you take wine, you heat it up. You reduce it and you get within the vinegar. Right. You know, through, through, yeah. through the heat, uh, the alcohol is evaporated. Also, the bonds are broken and newborn bonds are formed, and it's a totally new compound. Wow. And that's how you get vinegar. Well, it starts with a grape. Well, well, yeah, grape to grape juice to wine to vinegar. Yeah. Mm. While, while it's going through the, the heat yeah. process, while it's being reduced. So, this is it's the heart. If this. So how do we prove that it's been changed, the compound, the actual elements of the. the see, the Maraja themselves haven't proven that it's changed or not. They said that if there is a change, a change. then it is halal. But they haven't gone out of their way to investigate and say, yes, there is a change and you're allowed. They haven't said that. The only way we can do it is that if we take the gelatin uh, and it's from its initial uh, primary extraction to what it, through its process and what it becomes. As Give it to the lab. You need the scientific has no one research. Done that? Yeah, we need Seriously? The has has um, no one, no Islamic Institute, has no Islamic Institute um, or, 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 or not something? Not yet. Uh, they haven't investigated this. I think it's, it, it is Perhaps a... Perhaps somebody needs to look into be, that. Yeah, someone yeah. does need wow. to look into that. Um, we don't have many minutes and we do have a question. Yeah. Um, so some, Salam says, when I purchase halal sausages and mince meat, I'm concerned about which part of the animal body is used in making such a product. Are we forbidden from eating any parts of the animals? So we've covered, you know, yes. sort of most of the subject we've, we've of that discussed. question. Yes, yeah. um, um, I think for, for that viewer, please go and investigate what is being put into that, mm. uh, you know, product, and then from there, inshallah, mm. we can we can work out, um, you know, if it is halal to consume or not. Um, Mr. Father, I believe you had a question regards to blood and the yeah, 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 <laughs> Quickly definitely. going, yeah. Uh, yeah, we know about yeah. steaks. Um, you know, uh, people like to eat the medium rare, medium rare. Um, blue is even a delicacy for some people. What's blue? 
30 seconds on each side. Oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah, blue, yeah. Um, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's actually that's actually quite. I, I, I hope my horrified face does not, is not no. transparent well, because it, it's, it's like, like sushi, right? Sushi is actually raw, raw, raw meat. It's not blood, is it? It's not no, like but it's for Muslims. Yeah. Okay, what if they drain the blood? Okay, tell us. Yes. Um, so first of all, when we make when we sacrifice an animal to make it halal, the blood is pumped out. Yeah. Um, when we do cook steak, halal meat steak, you will see that there is some sort of uh, fluid, mm. liquid, red, fluid, yeah. red. That's plasma. It's not really blood. Mm. So, you know, you can, this is halal to consume, it's okay. So we can have halal meat steaks cooked rare, blue, if you want to try it out, okay. medium rare. That's okay. Because if it's halal. Blood, if it's halal, because okay. the blood has been drained and the remaining fluid isn't blood, it, it's, mm. it's plasma, it's, it's something else. Actually, but I was just going to go back to the gelatine issue. Um, that I've, I've noticed on products that you actually do say if it's uh, beef gelatine, which, yeah. which one it derives from. Um, but what would you say then as a last comment, I mean, personally, I abstain from anything that is, you know, anything that's got gelatine in it because just because you just don't know what the impact will be on you. Um, and there are alternatives. We're very lucky that if you have a, um, you know, a, 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 a source that is perhaps got gelatine, there's usually things that I've got, you know, suitable for vegetarians. But, um, but what would you say from an Islamic fiqh perspective? From an Islamic fiqh perspective, until we have further investigation, please stick to the packaging which has gelatine but has either halal stamp or a suitable vegetarian stamp. Mm. Just stick to that for now. So a suitable vegetarian is, is, is almost considered halal, basically. Yeah, it is halal. Mm. <laughs> so we need two things. We need a scientific study. Indeed. Yes. That's essential. Yeah, and I'm especially really surprised the Islamic mm. community doesn't come together to actually form um, a committee yeah. to look into this. Maybe there are. I don't yeah. know. Well, yeah, but good thing is you can have your blue steak. Yeah, yeah. That I'm definitely going to have. Yeah. So Although I'd, I'd, I wouldn't... I Would you like really try it? No, no, I don't like steak rare. Or even medium. I like it very, very well cooked. You'd think, the way he was saying it, that he No, I just like fish. Um, the thing is, I, I try to equate the two together. Like right. fish uh, raw, I, I'd eat any day of the year. But meat raw uh, is a bit of a different issue. Yeah. Like, for example, I know there's a Lebanese cuisine. They oh, have the, raw, yeah, yeah. Minced. They have raw minced meat um, yeah. with olive oil and yeah. a bit of dressing. And they'll eat it there and then. That would make Isn't that sick. in a certain way for your, in, you know, your intestines? But how can that be healthy? I mean, it must be because they're obviously red, eating red, it. Red meat is okay. Red meat to eat raw is, is Chicken, safe. Isn't it? White meat, no. No. But red meat is okay. That's why you can have it like blue. Um, I, I've been told you, you yeah, somebody you, here had a steak shop. Did they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually been there once. Yes. I remember I, was, I came with my family. Did, yes, that's did. what I remember. Yeah, yes. That's how you knew all the terms: blue, I, red, I medium, red. I, oh, I was involved in, in the steak trade a long time ago. Alhamdulillah, I learned a lot. Well, Sounds we good. have a we have um, a cookery element to the show, so yeah, we perhaps do. we need to have you on there. Yeah, I'm the cover chef. Maybe <laughs> behind all the behind all the Islamic garments, yeah. is it, put a hat on and start to. <laughs> that would be first. Anyway, anyway, thank you so much. Thank you um, for having yeah, me. Yeah, as, as always, we'd love to carry on the discussion. There's much more. I actually really would love to know more about the whole placenta. Um, issue, but, but next we'll, time we'll try and cover that. that in another episode somewhere. Yeah, um, which is very interesting. Mm. So uh, yeah, same what's in. Is there any last? No, words? just Today? wish you a good day. And thank again. you, thank you very much. We very much enjoyed your presence, um, Sayed. It's um, a pleasure to be here. From all at Imam Hussein TV, hope you enjoyed the episode. We've seen so much today, and um, there's so much more to look forward to. Um, so inshallah, we'll see you soon. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.